I just want to do a little uh, quick video today on workbench safety as I've had a few people ask me um, about safety of working on electronics that are connected to the AC line and why I'm always telling people use an isolation transformer. I'm going to try with my, my really crude drawing here to explain how an isolation transformer works and why it's very important to have one. And your conventional um, AC connection, your your utility is feeding you a hot and a neutral. The neutral is generally tied to ground. Your hot is your incoming AC power to your device, this being your device. Many times especially on older electronics, one side of the line cord was connected directly to the metal chassis. And if you didn't have a polarized plug, a polarized plug being one like this one here, which has one prong bigger than the other, you see, you could put the plug in to the outlet either way. And you had a 50-50 chance that that neutral line was actually going to be on the chassis. And if your house wiring wasn't done by a qualified electrician, then had the wires reversed even if you did have a polarized plug you could have the hot wire could be on the chassis switching power supplies are also quite dangerous because they generally connect one side to on the hot side uh, one one side of the line is directly connected to the the hot ground on the hot side of the switching power supply now if you just happen to be standing on the ground and you're grounded and you make contact with the hot chassis is not going to be pretty. You are going to become the conductor and you're going to get a shock. What an isolation transformer does, if we turn the page over here, an isolation transformer just by its very nature, you are completely isolated. You've still got your hot and your neutral coming in, but it's going through a one-to-one -one ratio transformer, which completely isolates the equipment that you are working on from your incoming utility so you could be touching the chassis and even if it's connected to one of these wires you are not connected to ground there's no path to ground through your body so you can touch something that's live and you won't get a shock when you're on an isolation transformer people have asked me what is an isolation transformer what does it look like and some of it some have assumed that my isolation transformer is my variac and that is not the case a variac, which is a, a variable transformer that you can adjust your voltage up and down, does not isolate you from the incoming line. Sorry about this uh, cord hanging here. I've just got my monitor plugged in so I can see what I'm doing. My isolation transformer is actually under my bench, and I'll show you what it looks like. So that's my isolation transformer. Everything that I work on through my isolated supply is going through that transformer there. That transformer is plugged in, or the variac on top of my bench is plugged into this transformer. The brown cord that you see here, this is actually the input to my isolation transformer. When I plug my isolation transformer in, anything that's plugged into my variac, which is here, is now isolated. I turn it on, and that actually powers up another little power bar that I've got at the side of my bench, which is my isolated test supply. When I'm working on any electronics, I will plug it into this isolated supply. There, whenever I'm testing anything, I always have it plugged into this isolated supply for safety. Now, something I heard many years ago, which I don't agree with, and some technicians still do this to this day, is they'll cut the ground prong off of, say, their oscilloscope. That way, their oscilloscope, it, the, the chassis on their oscilloscope is not tied to the ground. That way, if you're scope probe or to say touch something that's hot it's not going to result in major sparks and a short and possibly damaging your scope again if you're running through an isolation transformer this is not going to be an issue because your device that you are testing is already isolated so even if your ground probe on your scope for example were to make contact with a, a hot chassis or a live line if your if your ground probe here either the ground wire or your probe makes contact with with something that's hot there's not going to be a problem even if your scope is grounded and I, I always don't I don't recommend disconnecting the ground wire always keep your ground uh, on your scope because first of all it's going to keep your scope uh, you're just going to keep the chassis, your scope always grounded. It's going to keep your probe here always grounded. 
you don't want to risk uh, if, if, if there was a fault say in your in your scope and something were to short out it you don't want to have this become live and tied to your AC incoming uh, voltage so I don't recommend doing this this is something that uh, Tex used to do many years ago uh, it's not recommended because it does it does create a safety hazard on your test equipment if something were to fault in the test equipment. Scope and stuff still going to run without it. It's going to float though. And the idea is you want to try and keep your safety ground in place. So having a, a, an isolation transformer is the, one of the most important things you can do uh, when you're setting up a test bench for doing any type of diagnostics. Other things that you need on your test bench, well, a scope is nice. It's not, it's not 100% required, but if you need to do any signal measurements of signals, the scope is good to have. Of course, you're going to need a good, accurate meter. I've got a fluke here. It's pretty accurate and indispensable is one of these. This is the ESR tester. You need to have an ESR tester if you want to be able to measure uh, capacitors accurately. Other equipment that you'd want to have on a bench if you're servicing audio video equipment, of course, you're going to want a good pair of speakers for testing audio equipments. Uh, uh, testing amplifiers and stuff and you should also have an amplifier of some type if you're going to be testing out audio components such as CD players and tape decks something that you can amplify the signal to send it to your speakers and an analog monitor if you're planning on working on analog devices such as uh, videotape recorders the analog monitor is actually makes it a little easier if you're doing tape path alignment and uh, so forth or spotting bad heads because of how the display refreshes a lot of times if you have a distorted video signal such as from a bad head or a tape path alignment problem it won't show up on an LCD or a plasma screen just because of the way that the uh, LCD and plasma screens operate they store the entire frame of video both fields and then display it at once and if one of the frames or one of the fields is missing or distorted you could result in no picture at all because if it's getting say you have a head that's clogged for example you may not even get a picture at all on an LCD screen because it's it's getting one field of noise and uh, one field of good video um, or if you've got a tape path alignment problem I've certainly found when I've tried hooking things up to my LCD screen that uh, just diagnosing them is a little more difficult so that's why I've got the old analog monitor up here for when I'm working on analog devices it just gives me a much quicker um, I can see the picture and I know where the problem is if I've got a distortions at the top of the picture I know it's the the alignment on the entry side guide and if it's on the bottom it's on the exit side when you're trying to look at it on a digital monitor and the whole picture is rolling or it's flashing or it's not you know not locking up it makes it a little more difficult so that's another piece of equipment that's really good to have on your test bench but anyway that's just a very quick video here I just wanted to show what uh, what you really need for and of course you need a good soldering iron I had a really good one here but the um, the control uh, not the control module the actual temperature sensor that went inside the tip it had a little thermal couple that would read the tip temperature and the thermal couple went bad and wouldn't you know Weller no longer makes the parts for these so that was a $500 soldering station that uh, I can't get parts for anyway I just wanted to make this a real quick uh, video on bench safety and uh, I hope everyone out there uh, enjoys the videos and enjoys fixing your stuff and uh, we'll keep them coming catch you later